Welcome back to Farm and Hammer everyone. In today's video, I'm going to try to give you guys an overview of all the things you need before you can start raising bottle calves. So first off, as you guys can tell, we've had our first snow of the year. Well, first major snow. We've had a little dusting here and there, but uh, we had like an inch, inch and a half, and uh, that was two days ago, I guess. And it's still here, which is bad because now it's starting to melt and Feeding with the truck is getting more difficult and more difficult because all the rain and flooding and everything is just way too wet. So, I checked the weather this morning and I think we're pretty much done with all the snow and ice and rain. And so I think for the next week it's supposed to be mid 40s to 50s. And I think even a week from now it's supposed to be like almost 60 degrees. So, definitely won't be able to complain about the weather next week. But currently I have a kitten trying to climb up my leg. Anyway, ow, hey, that does not feel good. So I've had a lot of questions and comments, people kind of just wondering if I could do a series on bottle calves for beginners, everything you need to know, things you need to buy, things you need to have, and basically just how to get started. And so, um, since I'm getting more bottle calves, actually when you're watching this video, I'll be picking up two that day, I think, and uh, I'll have more on that in the, pre in the next video but so yeah I just wanted to give you guys kind of an overview of all the things you will be needing before you can get some bottle caps so this is not going to be a course you have to buy this is just going to be a video series since I'm getting bottle caps already I thought I might as well just show you guys um, all the people that want to get started everything you can do he's doing it again it's a bad habit to start doing <clears throat> so let's get into it first thing you need before you can even consider raising bottle calves is number one you got to have some kind of barn or some place to put them obviously as you guys saw from last year i put calves in this barn we have this barn which is pretty big we used to raise like 40 in here then i have this little shed here which you guys have also seen and that was where i put like the group pens and all that so obviously we have a series of sheds and barns here i can use but you don't need this much depending on how many you plan on raising uh, I could raise a total of 30 some in one season just in this little barn just because you can fit like six on this side and six on that side and uh, you know when you rotate them out if you get two here and wait a couple weeks get a couple more you can go through a cycle and end up getting 30 in one season so yes if you do a lot of research you'll know a lot of people they build these fancy barns and all that for raising bottle calves, which normally those are great, but for the average person trying to get started, that's not what you're gonna be able to afford. And honestly, it's not something you really need. So yes, ventilation is important. You do, do need a way to cycle out some of that dirty, gross air. And obviously in this barn, <laughs> Obviously in this barn, that is not a problem because it's an open end shed. And so there's air coming right in here. Obviously if you're gonna have really cold weather, this is not the barn to put them in. I'll have a whole different video on bedding, but I picked this up last night. This is just straw bales. I paid like $4.50 a bale, which is a little high. And as you guys know, in previous videos, I used to buy big round bales because they were way cheaper. But since I'm only getting two calves, I didn't find a good round bale, a cheap enough round bale. So I just got these from local feed store and uh, there are tons of different options for bedding, um, which I can make a whole separate video on that if you guys would like. But for me, I like straw, it's pretty basic. You can find it, it's not hard to get and normally it's pretty relatively cheap, so. The next thing you will need is milk powder of course so um as you guys have seen once again from last year i have this little old well house here and uh that's where i keep the milk replacer because you can see i'm trying to keep all my cups just so i can you know know exactly how many milk powder bags i've been through which it's as you can tell it's quite a few but anyway i put it on the styrofoam because humidity does tend to get in here and sometimes wet on the floor but um it's pretty dirty messy it's just this is a nice dry place to keep this and it also keeps away the 
varmint. So mice, rats, raccoons, possums, even your dog or cat, they love to chew on the corners of this thing and get into the milk powder, spill it everywhere, and there goes your $75 bag of milk replacer. So make sure you have a good, nice, safe, dry place for your milk replacer. Um, you leave it sitting out, something is guaranteed to get into it. Make sure you find somewhere safe and dry for your milk replacer. And it doesn't make any sense to have any milk replacer if you don't have any way to feed it. So uh, these are my four bottles here. I think I actually have five, don't know where the last one is here, but <clears throat> you don't need that many bottles and you don't need that many nipples either. Even if you're feeding 10, I can get by with using four just by feeding one, washing the bottle, putting new milk in it, washing the nipple, feeding the others. So you can get by with minimal bottles. It does make it easier to have at least one bottle per calf, but once again, you don't need that many as long as you make sure you clean the bottles between feeding different calves. So um, my nipples are actually inside. I think I have eight nipples just because they've, you know, I've collected them over time. And so this bottle, this bottle is like 15 years old. We've been using this one for a long, long time. And I don't know if you can tell, but it is a little discolored and more dirty inside. But uh, these things last you a long time if you keep them, once again, in a dry place where they don't get super cold or anything like that. Um, definitely keep them out of the sun as well, if you can. And then some of those nipples have also been 15 years old. I did buy quite a few new ones, or a couple new ones, last year because some of the old ones were dry and drying out and cracking. But uh, anyway, get you some bottles and nipples. Normally they're relatively cheap. You won't be your most expensive thing to get started with. But as you guys know, I have kind of moved on from using these things. I will show you what I'm up to now. Once again, as you guys have seen in previous videos, I have bucket raised some calves. So if you want to raise bucket calves, you can do so. It's just, I would recommend getting a bottle and nipple as well, just to get them started. That's what I do. Um, and I'll have more videos on that when I actually get calves. But if you do want some buckets, we've had these things for more than 15 years. They've raised a lot of calves for us. Some of them have not done so well. The bottoms have been pushed out of them. Um, but these things, I don't even know how much you can buy these for, these types of buckets. Um, but we used to have like 60 of them because we used to raise like 60 some calves in a season. <clears throat> Just make sure you have some type of bucket. The plastic ones tend to break down pretty quick, so that's why we like these. Um, like I said, I don't even know if you can buy these anymore, but we still have so many left over, that's what I use. And these are surrounded by gross stuff because the ceiling fell out of the barn. But um, these will all be washed up and used again. And uh, I guess this is another good thing to show you here. Uh, this is a rubber, rubber little bucket here. Um, this is just what we use to feed grain. You can use the same kind there to feed grain. It's just these things I think run a little bit cheaper and they will also last you a long time. These are the same things we've had since I was a small child. We fed a lot of calves with them. Still are in great shape. Obviously this one's just dirty and has to be cleaned up. But anyway, just make sure you have a milk bucket if you're planning on feeding uh, in a bucket. And then you also need a grain bucket whether you're feeding on the bottle or in a bucket. But as you guys know, I have tried to kind of move away from doing bottle calves as well because, because I've upgraded to this thing here. And this is a 10, 10 calf milk bar feeder. And each of these compartments, you fill them up. Actually, hey, there's two of my nipples, which should not be out here, and one of my two feeders. But um, I haven't seen this stuff in a year because I haven't, actually, over a year. Anyway, so yeah, you can find these. You don't need one of these. It just does make things quicker if you're raising quite a few of them. Uh, so I can feed 10, clean it out feed another group of 10 and I actually got two of these on Craigslist actually I think it was Facebook marketplace um, but these are hard to find used especially um, it was just my luck that the one day I looked on Facebook marketplace a guy was selling them so um, I got these for I think 300 bucks for two of them and uh, pretty good deal because these things new are expensive um, and I do need to replace the nipples on these this year um, I got away with the old ones last year, but this year I'm going to have to put new ones on. And I think those nipples run like 60 bucks for a pack of 10. So uh, anyway, 
It just does make life a whole lot simpler when you're raising quite a few. And this is one of those things not very many people think of when they think they're gonna raise some calves. If you're gonna raise probably five or more, you need an extra water heater from the one in your house just because you're gonna be using a lot of hot water. And if you have a um, larger family like me, uh, people used to get mad whenever I'd use all the hot water to feed baby calves and they have a cold shower. So um, this is just one we have out in the barn. Uh, it's no good right now because these pipes, when we had them installed, they have cracked since and there's no water going to them. So um, anyway, I was gonna try to get this one, put a new heating element in here. Uh, I still may do that, but um, last year I just used the one from the house. We actually have a pretty big water heater in the house, so um, we don't really have to worry about that. But if you have a small water heater, you're trying to feed a lot of calves, I'm guessing the rest of your family would appreciate it if you could not use all the hot water. But you gotta feed calves some hot slash warm milk. And so water heater is another thing you gotta, gotta make sure you have figured out. So guys, that is my bare minimum list for things you need to start raising bottle calves. Obviously there's gonna be a lot more stuff you can get um, as extras, but that's kind of the stuff you need for sure. Um, obviously the other things like medication, uh, you're probably gonna need some scour boluses, vaccines, things like that. Um, but I will do a whole separate video on vaccines, scour, medication, and antibiotics. So that's gonna be a whole other video, but you will have to have some kind of scour treatment because I can pretty much guarantee if you're gonna raise five or more, you're gonna have trouble with it eventually. So, um, so anyway guys, thank you for watching. Um, try to keep this guy under control here, keep him from climbing up my leg. Um, like I said, I will be getting two calves when you're watching this video the same day. And so, um, lots of more calves to come since you're getting, since I'm getting two, might as well get 10. Since I'm getting 10, I might as well get 50. So uh, I'm going to try to get quite a few, at least as many as I did last year. And, uh, um, Anyway, it's gonna start getting busy, as well as, you know, I'm getting pigs here in a couple, I guess, two months now. So, um, anyway, lots of things going on, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, I can do, I can keep doing stuff for the series of people just getting into bottle calves, but I'm also gonna try to keep the, like, farm vlogs going as well. So, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time.